Hi everyone, uh, my name is Alessandro, I'm uh, from Montreal. I'm gonna share with you a vision for building uh, sort of modular language models. So we have witnessed basically the uh, wide adoption of large language models such as the GPT-4 that have very broad capabilities and uh, can be used to solve a variety of tasks, but they are always, they are kind of expensive to serve and some, somehow we can actually think and ask ourselves, are, we, are they really necessary for most tasks that users uh, for Microsoft, for example, might, uh, might need. Uh, this has basically boosted the development of small language models, for example, the mighty and very powerful Fi2, that can be adapted to user tasks, right? Either with full fine tuning, which means we change all the parameters of the model, or with parameter efficient adaptation. For example, by training LoRa's, which only change a small amount of the parameters of the model. And basically, if we can see these experts, basically these small parameters, these small adapters as experts at their own tasks, right? And this is great because we have now a cost-effective model that can solve the tasks very effectively, but the problem now is that we have only very narrow capabilities. So the question that we ask here is that now that we have all these expert models for each user, so for each task, can we actually reuse the expert models for either building uh, a small models that have broader capability or for adapting to new users and tasks more efficiently? Let me show you how this system could work. So we start from a base model, which is Fi2, and we adapt this base model for every user or for a set of tasks. And we group such this sort of adapters into a library. And now we kind of come up with a sort of orchestration mechanism that chooses which adapters to use based on a new user query to produce a system response. The system has sort of some desirable properties. One is that it enhances the base uh, language model capabilities via such an expert composition. And this resembles a little bit how a mixture of experts work, right? But there is a big difference here, is that these experts are not trained with the base model itself, but they are trained a posteriori. This leads us to the second point, which is basically a sort of decentralized training of these LRI experts. And this is good because somehow users, for example, this preserves privacy in the sense that we do not need, uh, we do not require all the data to be shared uh, at once and to always retrain the base model from scratch. And second, the energy efficiency. These LoRa experts are very energy efficient. And so basically, we can train it uh, very quickly. The third point is interpretability, because these experts are basically associated with the task, usually, that they can solve. And so upon you, uh, seeing a new user query, we can actually inspect uh, which expert has been activated for that user query, and we can get a little bit of sense of which actually capabilities are required. So in order to build this, uh, this system, we have to answer two questions. One, how do we build such an expert library? And second, how do we select the relevant experts for these new inputs? So the first, basically, scenario uh, that we are uh, dealing with is a sort of a private scenario, in the sense that we have an ensemble of data sets, which are tasks or user data. And in the private scenario, we assume that we cannot share data for these tasks, okay? We cannot train on all the data uh, together. And so basically, one standard approach is to fine tune, for example, a LoRa um, adapter on each data set independently. Here in the figure, we are gonna end up with a library with three experts. But let's say that we can actually share a certain amount of this data, okay? Uh, for example, if we are dealing with public tasks or stuff like that. So the idea here around this approach is to basically form a sort of clusterings uh, of these tasks and just train uh, uh, an adapter for each cluster. How do we cluster this task, actually? We basically do a sort of a private law fine tuning for a few steps at the beginning to get just weights for each task. Right? And then we cluster the weights of each task by their similarity, and we group tasks together that have high weight similarity. And we train one adapter for task. So at the, at the end, we're gonna end up with a library of two experts. This basically relies on the intuition that the similarity in the weight space for these tasks reflects how synergistic these tasks are when adapters are trained uh, on the joint dataset. Now that we have our great library of experts, 
we have to choose how to actually select them upon seeing a new input, okay? Here we assume that we do not have access to the data that's being used to train the experts. So basically you train your experts, you gave it to us, and we figure out how to use it. So here to do routing, we basically select which expert to use uh, for each representation in the base model. The base model is a transformer. We have a representation for each layer and for each token. And so basically we route by the dot products between each hidden states in the transformer and an expert representation. But now we have to come up with an expert representation and we do not know which data is, these experts has been trained on. Here, to do so, we leverage basically the functional form of these LoR adapters, which basically uh, produce a linear shift on the hidden state representations. And so we basically, we take the, uh, the linear transform of the LoR adapter, we decompose it into singular uh, directions, and we take the top singular direction of that matrix. That gives us our expert representation. We stack those expert representation in a matrix, in a routing matrix, we compute the dot product, much similar to the mixture of experts, uh, kind of uh, sort of parameterization, and we choose which experts we use based on the, the scores obtained by that. Here, the idea is simple, is that that singular direction gives us a sense of how the hidden states for that expert looked like when that expert was training. So in order to test basically our system here, we, 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 we assume that we have some data for tasks available, and we use like FLAN data, which is just natural language tasks, and we, set, we evaluate our systems on a set of these uh, uh, 10 uh, tasks uh, used to evaluate V2. And uh, these tasks range from common sense reasoning, code, uh, BBH, big, big bench art, et cetera. And so basically, these are uh, some results that we obtained in the recent submission is that uh, we have like phi two, uh, the first part, which gets uh, out of the box around 64, and then we actually fine tuned phi two on our old multitask data set, and this gets a boost of around 65.5, and basically this approach assumes that we can train on all data, right? And then we have our first dot, which is private plus arrow, and so basically we, uh, private, as I remember, uh, um, it trains experts independently, 256 tasks, and then that is post-hoc routing. And here, it was very surprising to us that we can actually get some good performance even with this method. But if we go further, we assume some sort of selective data sharing, and we, um, we have our clustering approach, and then a route on top of that, we can get even further gains. And this last method, MC, MBC plus Aro, actually adds only 22 million parameters to the model. So, looking forward, I believe that uh, an exciting direction would be really to push this to fully decentralized training and continual improvement of language models. In the sense, people can train their experts, they give it to the platform, and model gets better. The other point is a uh, heterogeneous library of adapters, in the sense that we can actually add different sort of adapters into this library, each with its own indust inductive biases, and so uh, we can expand even more the capabilities. Thank you very much.